Good afternoon, folks. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clayway. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger, and I will happily try to answer them for my subscribers and people who click the notifications if I can. I will help you with your muddy troubles, but I cannot help you with baby mama drama. So what we're working on today is a 2006 Pontiac Torrent, but this is going to be the same for the Chevy Equinox and the Saturn View of the same flavor. So probably 2002 to 2007-ish range for this people who need to know that. We've got some ABS lights on and it's not just a wheel bearing problem this time. So we're going to end up replacing the control unit down inside here. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. But first we're going to give it a scan, show you what codes are coming up and go from there. These are the lights that we got on, brake, ABS, more than likely traction control. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and scan the vehicle. And because we got a bunch of different fault codes, we want to make sure that we don't have a blown fuse before we go to try to repair this problem. But now we're going to go ahead and click on ABS, trouble codes, read codes. Now we've got a couple fault codes. Mostly what we're interested in is this solenoid number two. I know how to fix this one. I can just reset the light because I actually have that plugged in right now. So I'm going to go back and do that. I've gotten rid of the other trouble code that I had by replacing the rear wheel bearing sensor on there. So now I've just got a C0095 solenoid circuit two. I'm gonna remove this fuse box and how I'm gonna do that is down here on the sides there's little clips. I need to push them clips up right back here. That's how I'm gonna start anyways push them clips out so that allows me to lift up on the fuse box and start to move it up out of the way. With my fuse box lifted up, I'm going to start loosening these three screws. Now taking a seven millimeter, we loosen the three screws. Taking a hammer from your kid's toy box, we tap down on the screws. This pushes the electrical connectors on the bottom out of their holder. By pulling out on these tabs, that allows us to raise the computer up. And we repeat the process on the other side. Now taking the computer and setting it off to the side, we can remove the battery cover and disconnect the positive terminal of the battery. With our battery disconnected, we need to undo one 13 millimeter nut stud for our positive. Now with that undone, we can flip the fuse box over and push our tabs to release the last two connectors that hold our fuse box to the subframe. Push down on them and push them away. Hard to do with the camera in my way. Okay, so now we need to disconnect our negative cable and pull the 13 or 14 millimeter holding bracket down. Then we're gonna remove four 13 millimeter bolts that hold down our battery tray and one 10 millimeter bolt that holds down the battery tray. On the back side of the battery tray, before we can remove it, there is a couple of connectors clipped to the outside. We need to remove them. I believe there was two. I've already removed this to verify this procedure. On this model, on the front side, there's two little clippies that you need to push in to allow this air intake to come out. Now we need to remove the ignition control module and we do that by pu pulling out on this clip and prying it up and then prying it out from underneath the bracket. To 
disconnect the electronic ignition control module. We pull back on that, pushing down on that clip to allow the cam release to be undone, repeating the process for the rear one. Now we need to remove the bracket that holds our ignition control module on, and I'm gonna pull that up. It slips down into this groove and is held on by this little tab right here and slips onto these. Now we need to disconnect our control module and this is also a cam lock. Be careful not to break this. You don't wanna pull it out too far. Because it's hard to visualize and show you what's going on here, we're gonna go ahead and use the new one and I've affixed it to it. As it pushes up, these little clips slide through there on them little tangs right there. Now we know when this is ready to insert because you can see through the windows down here. And that will drag the clip down as you push it down or pull it up. And we can see through the window how that slides. Now we need to loosen the two nuts, 13 millimeters, on each side of the pump so we can move it up and down. Okay, because the brake lines are really a pain in the butt to change, I plugged everything back in, my battery, my fuse box, all that stuff, and plugged my new controller in. And I started my vehicle to verify that I had no more ABS lights on. Filler audio. 1972, Stephen Hawkins was told by three different doctors that he had less than two years to live. He outlived all three doctors. Okay, because there's six of these brake lines, you want to be extremely careful when you go to remove these. Do not move these any more than they allow. Do not bend the lines at all, or you will have serious, serious cursing matches by yourself in the garage when you go to reinstall these lines. Moving them as little as possible is definitely recommended. Okay, I thought I'd show you guys this, how this works sits in that bracket there's a little rubber pen that goes through there so this slides up but we've still got our back lines on so we're going to loosen them up we're going to pull it and set it over so we can get to the back lines easier you can also use a gear wrench or a regular wrench to get on these nuts to loosen them up Now I don't have much advice if your line nuts don't spin like mine do. Um, usually when I get them off, I take a socket and put it on the other side and spin it with an electric impact or whatever to loosen the lines up so they spin freely because that makes the job a lot easier. Now I've got all the lines off, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the pump. I could not get mine to release from the bracket, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a screwdriver and hopefully wiggle it free now that my brake lines are loose. I did not have my nut as loose as I thought it did, so now that I've got it looser, I can take it and wiggle it up. If yours was like mine and your nut wouldn't loosen up because the bolt just spun inside there, you're gonna have to remove the whole bracket. It's not that bad, but I have video of that after the show. If you took your bracket off like me, Make sure you reinstall your bolts before you put your pump on. It makes it much easier to get the nuts started. The posts on the side that holds the nuts are just posts like this, and they simply pull out. So cleaning off the threads would not be a bad idea, so your nuts will go down securely. These posts have notches on them, and they are 15 millimeter if you've got a thin enough wrench to get between the bracket and the pump. Fitting the post back onto the pump where they point at the 10 o'clock, five o'clock position is probably a good idea so they slide into the bracket. Make sure that you raise your brake lines out of the way as you're installing your pump. Your brake lines will turn in as easy as they turned out. If they do not, they are cross-threaded and you need to start over and try to start them again.
Unfortunately, I can only give you advice to starting these lines. When you go to start them, you want to make sure that the line is perfectly straight when you go to start it. You do not want to bend the line itself. You just want to be able to move the line freely and then get it to start. And like I said, it should go in as easy as it came out. If it does, that's how you know you got it started correctly and it's not cross-threaded. If you do cross thread it, don't put the wrench on it to try to turn it in because if it came out easy, it'll go in easy. look like mine they should okay when going to start these lines you're gonna pull up on the line and push down on the line nut then if it's square sorry you can't see because my big old fat hands in the way should start to screw down pretty easy and it did and so forth and so on okay to start these lines we're gonna pull up on the line itself and wiggling the line just a little bit to get it to start. Once it gets started, it should go down in there really, really easy. Now for the gray lines, now for the gray lines, we can reach our arm underneath so we can move it at the pivot point and we can just barely move it with our left arm holding the line upwards so it's at the bottom of the nut not down inside the hole we should be able to start them and turn them in by finger now we can take our line wrench and we should be able to tighten everything up Later on in the video, we're expecting special guest Kip Winger from the hair band in the 80s. Winger, that sold billions of copies of albums with their hit, She's Only 17. And I can't remember the rest of their songs, but he'll be here maybe. Probably not, but could be. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put our electrical connector on our AVS control module. And we just push that down until it sits and then clip it all the way in. We're gonna go ahead and tighten up our 13 millimeter nuts on the outside of our control module. Double check your work and make sure all your lines are super tight because you're gonna have that ignition module over the top of there and it's gonna be difficult to see once you put it back together. Retighten them. Okay, I've got an assistant inside and he's going to pump the brakes and we're going to see if Playboy has any leaks here. Go ahead, pump them up, Cam. Nope. No leaky leakies. Good for me. Now that I don't have any leaks, I'm going to go ahead and replace my battery tray and etc. electronics and plug in my fuse box and then we'll start the bleed procedure. When installing the electrical connectors for your fuse box, install the gray one first, your black one second, and your white one third. It is perfectly all right to set your connectors down in there and then set your fuse box back on the top. Put your two connectors back on, one for your power steering, the other one for your feed for your fuse box. Then apply your brake cables back to the battery. Now working from the screen, I'm gonna go back to special functions, automatic bleed, and see what the instructions are to bleed it out. I'm gonna give you guys the instructions that it gives me. Now you're going to raise the vehicle up safely and support it on jack stands and remove the 19 millimeter lug nuts. If you've got rusty bleeders like me, it's not a bad idea to spray them with some PB. 
just for the few of you that may not know this, if your bleeder screw is not on the top of your caliper, you've got your calipers on the wrong side. I've seen that quite a few times, believe it or not. This is what happens with kip wingers not around to make sure things don't go wrong. You break off bleeder screws. Even though Kip Winger wasn't here, we somehow managed to replace the caliper because I could not get the bleeder out. If he would have been here, I'm sure it would have came out easy. We've got all the air out of the lines. Now we're gonna start the vehicle and test out the brakes. I'm really upset about this Kip thing. Will you guys go over to Twitter and ask him why he didn't show up for the Clayway show? Make sure you share this video with him and show him that we got it done even without him. I have not turned on the scanner or used it to reflash anything, so this was a plug and play situation where we were able to change the ABS module. So I wanted to take the vehicle for a drive and see if you needed to do the automated brake bleed procedure. I think the brakes work pretty good. So I'd have to say no, but you should contact your local service provider. Double check, they feel a little bit stiff to me. Hopefully this video was helpful. You'll consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos, giving me them sweet old thumbs up. If you got a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I'll be happy to try to answer your automotive related needs for all of my subscribers and people who click the notifications. Don't be the next of them, be the first of you. And if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. That I promise you, God bless. Just like I said, Saturn View and Chevy Equinox are the same. I double checked myself.